So now let's talk about the iPad and the ways how you can take a screenshot. So I'm going to show you every single way how you can do it from basic to the one using a keyboard to shortcuts to assistive touch, pretty much everything. Of course, the most basic way to do it is to locate the power button and also the volume buttons right there. So just press the power button and the lower volume button at the same time. You can even do it with the other button as well. So it doesn't matter which one you press as long as you press it at the same time as the power button. So you go like this and they are together so you don't even have to stretch your fingers that much. If you have an iPhone with the home button, the same thing as on the older iPhone. So just the power button and the home button. So on the iPad, the same thing. If you have an iPad with the home button, just like this and you should be able to take a screenshot. That's like the most basic way to do it. But you can also ask Siri to do it. So take a screenshot. And as you can see, Siri does it for me, so I don't even have to do it. I don't even have to invoke Siri when I don't have access to the iPad. Let's say that the iPad is somewhere in distance. You can even invoke Siri using the command that I'm not gonna say because it's gonna trigger your Siri most likely. Then besides that, you have the option to use assistive touch. So going to the settings and and in the accessibility section right here, you can see a couple of different options. So go to the uh, touch right there and you have uh, the assistive touch right there at the top of the page. So you can enable assistive touch and you need to customize what happens. So click on a top level menu. For me, the only thing that happens is that it opens uh, the app switcher. So I'm going to replace it with something like the screenshot. So scroll down and uh, here is the screenshot. And if you have multiple buttons in here, just click on the minus icon until you end up with just one. So you're going to go like this. And now my floating button, what it does, it just takes a screenshot. You can see that it also like disappears because you don't want to have this button on your screenshots most likely. So don't worry, it's not going to stand in the way. Of course, you can choose it for a single tap, double tap, or even long press. So different options. You can use this button for multiple different things because if you reset it in here, uh, the older options just show up. So right now, if you click on it, all of these things just end up on your screen so click on a control center if you want or do whatever you want to click on a device you can even here uh, rotate the screen or do some other stuff you can click on more options and here you have the shake we have the speak screen you even have the screenshot right here so you can use it in many different ways assistive touch is really a powerful feature but let's say that you use a magic keyboard like this one so it's for the ipad pro and let me just place the iPad on it. Now, if I just go like this, you should be able to see the screen kind of and also the, the keyboard. Anyways, if I want to take a screenshot using the keyboard, what I can press is a shortcut, which is Command Shift N3. You can see it took a screenshot and the, as you know, you can click on the screenshot like this and you can resize it and edit it right away. You can get there by clicking on the small screenshot preview there. But if you'd like to skip even these steps, then what you can do is press the command shift and instead of the number three, you click the four. So command shift four, and this is going to take a screenshot, but gets you right away to the edit section. So now you can edit it right away without even pressing the uh, small preview of the screenshot. So this is very useful and it works the same way on a MacBook. So in case you're familiar with taking screenshot on a Mac, OS, you can apply most of the stuff to the iPad OS and it should work. For example, Command Shift 5 does not work, although it works on the Mac. This is a way to take a screenshot of one individual window, but here on the iPad, most of the stuff just takes up the entire screen anyway, so it's a different user interface. So this is how it can work as well. And besides that, the other option is to use a Siri shortcut. In case you don't have the application ready, you can just download it by going to the App Store and click on a shortcut, and it's gonna most likely show you the first 
way so you can see the first app is the one from apple so just install it it's a free app and using this one if you open it up you can create multiple different automations so you can go to the automation and create a personal automation and based on the time of the day or on your alarm when you arrive at a certain location you can choose that this is the time where your screenshot is going to be taken or create a different shortcut so go to shortcuts and create a new one so uh, whenever you receive a text message you can choose that after that your uh, ipad is going to take a screenshot or whatever it is there are plenty of options and plenty of things to to do with the shortcuts as you know it's a very powerful app as well so so yeah these are the ways to take a screenshot too so that would be about it hope the video helped you out if you want to see more content about ipad iphones and apple tutorials make sure to subscribe here to fox tech and also check out the next video right here thanks a lot for watching see you guys later